Thanks, David. Um, I think we won that debate, didn't we? And you lost. <laughs> Mr. Veal was on your team too, I think. Semantics. Semantics. It, wa it was a lot of fun. Um, uh, there's three things I want to do today, but I'm going to start. Um, today's a very strange day for me. Um, it is my 20,000th day on the planet Earth. And we don't ever think to measure our lives in terms of the number of days. Um, um, and it was earlier this year, um, somebody, um, a, a good friend of mine, um, talked about it and said, oh, you must be coming up to your 20,000 days. I've just missed mine. Um, and I just fascinated everybody at work today because they've all rushed off to work out how many days old they are. Um, so 20,000 days, you think I might have learned something along the way, maybe. Um, so I'm going to do three, three things today. Uh, is this working? Yep, I'm going to talk um, about some of the people that have inspired me in my career. And it's always interesting where inspiration comes from. Um, most recently, I've become completely fascinated by David Bowie again. I saw a documentary on him. Uh, I got reintroduced to Ziggy Stardust, which is an album I hadn't listened to in years, um, and I now promote very heavily. Um, it's still very relevant and, and very, very current. I'm going to talk a little bit about my career, but I'm going to do it in 10-year in blocks, um, um, because that's about all I can remember. Um, I'm going to talk about Power by Proxy, as David said, and I'm just going to finish with some questions about New Zealand, which I think are, which are important to me. They're things that keep me awake at night. So. Um, we all think of five years as being a long time, and in business we do our planning in two to three block, two to three year blocks. And you know, one of the things that has become really fascinating for me is thinking about my career. <coughs> excuse me, thinking about my life in ten year blocks. It's really, really hard to achieve big, meaningful things in very short spaces of time. So, you know, ten years for me is you know when I look back and I guess you rationalise the, the story of your life. You know, it's been an interesting block of time to think about, and you know, I'd urge people to also think about, you know, where would I like to be in 10, ten years' time? What sorts of things would I be able to look back on and say that I've achieved that, I've done that, I've ticked that off? So, um, the, the interesting story for me about David Bowie was uh, when he recorded this album, he was outrageously young. His creativity, his personality, um, I mean, outrageous as the things he did was just insane. Um, and it was really interesting looking back at um, how he moved through different eras of his career and the, pe the places he lived, um, which were at the epicentre of what was going on in the world at the time, and the people and the talent he, he attracted around him to do some very, very different things with his music career. Um, and that's really a lot about what business is about. It's all about the talent you attract, the people you work with, and, and how you put those teams together uh, ar ar around you. And it was really a part of him that, um, and a part of music that you really don't think about very, very often. Um, you know, moving from the UK to Philadelphia and getting um, people, the, the black soul musicians from Phil Philadelphia around him and producing the Young Americans an album, you know, completely different to the, to the original one. So um, my first 10 years, um, I spent working for a guy who inspired me. He inspired pretty much every single part of my career, a guy called Bill Foreman, uh, managing director and founder of Trigon Plastics. Um, you know, one of the uh, great manufacturing entrepreneurs of New Zealand. Bill left me with three impressions. He introduced me to computers, so he got me hooked on technology. He got me hooked on exporting, because exporting was the only thing in the world that mattered to, to, to Bill. And he got me hooked on doing whatever I did from New Zealand. Now I've moved around the world and lived in lots of different places, but I've always come home to do what I do. Um, for me, you know, what I am doing now with Power by Proxy is what I've spent my whole life um, wanting to do, dreaming about, and, and now it really is incredibly exciting to be doing what, doing what I'm doing. So, um, so that, that was the first 10 years. The second 10 years of my career, I wandered around the world. I took one of the first New Zealand software companies offshore in 1985. It was the mini computer era. Um, I went and lived not in Silicon Valley, because Silicon Valley wasn't hot in those days. Um, the, the world in those days was being driven by Massachusetts. You know, the big mini computer companies were all in the northeast of the US. Um, venture capital community was at, at a very, very fledging time in those days. So, um, so I spent 
almost 10 years living offshore. We sold the company. I had to spend a couple of years in a very, very, very cold place called Toronto. Um, and then I came home and did a couple of corporate things. I, mean, I really hadn't worked out what I wanted to do next. I did a, a big startup which uh, um, here um, where I was 2IC, which was Bell South, the cellular network. And I think we um, I inter interfaced with Neville's company back in those days. Um, so that shows how small the world is. I, I didn't, hadn't met Neville at that point. But, um, and then I went on to, to Microsoft where I worked out I really wasn't a corporate guy. Um, uh, and, uh, and so that was the, really the second um, 10 years. And, now, and then I came home in 2002. Um, didn't plan to come home, but came home because my wife um, was ill and needed surgery. Um, and started the process of looking about, well, you know, how I get serious about building a global technology company in New Zealand. Um, and that's where the Power by Proxy story uh, started. Uh, I met a young graduate from the University of Auckland who had studied wireless power at, um, up at the University of Auckland, which is, has been the leading research centre for wireless power in the world for the last 25 years. Fatty wanted to start a wireless power company, he'd had a couple of goes at it, um, but you know, as a young guy, didn't have all the, you know, all the skills, all the networks, so I sat down and had a look at it and said, yeah, there's, a, there's an awful lot here. I'm sure there's something we can, we can build with this. So we are setting out to change the world and the way every single one of us interfaces with electricity on a day-to-day -day basis. Our, our world today is ruled by consumer electronic devices. We carry devices in our pockets. You know, 10 years ago, the smartphone didn't exist. And this is how much the world has changed in the last 10 years. And yet the only way we can power those products or keep those products powered is to plug them in the wall at the end of every day. Um, we've been doing that every year for the, ev that every day for the last 100 years in terms of how we get electricity uh, into our devices that we, and our appliances um, in our homes. Every, every house I have ever lived in has had more power plugs per room uh, than the one before. Um, and we see a world in 10 years' time where the walls will be completely naked. There will be no power plugs. Power will be delivered via surfaces, via tabletops, via bench tops. Um, it will be completely invisible. So um, that's the big vision that we have uh, as, as, a, as, an organi as a company, changing the way we think about electricity, the way we interface with it. Over the course of the last seven years, um, David said our first customer, uh, John Deere, we've continued you know, year in, year out to achieve what we wanted to achieve, validating, getting validation for our technology, our products and our solutions by selling it, by engaging with some of the best, com best and the biggest companies in the world. Um, that culminated last year uh, when Samsung Ventures became a uh, an investor in my company, Samsung, ha has become a company that we're also developing a range of different solutions for as an organisation. So um, the vision is being matched by putting together an organisation and a team that um, actually delivers on the stuff. Um, th there's a bunch of different ways that we go about doing that. We have 60 um, engineers at the moment. Um, our plans over the next uh, 12 months is to double that, um, or more than double it. We have about 90 new people to, to recruit in the next uh, uh, 12 months as we continue to grow as a, as a company. And we can do this purely because of the 25 years of research that Professor John Boyce has led up at the University of Auckland. Uh, it's a high-tech franchise. It's a very important technology franchise for this country, and one which we hope that we can build an entrepreneurial ecosystem around here. So we're not just the only company, but there will be many companies that can be built off this type of technology. You know, think about what companies like Intel did for Portland, what uh, Microsoft has done for Seattle, and companies obviously like Apple uh, in Silicon Valley have created these um, technology hubs uh, that we can grow and we can, we can build on. As a collective between the University of Auckland and ourselves, we have 221 patents or patent applications. They have been examined 
over and over and over again by some of the largest companies in the world. They give us real hard competitive advantage when we're engaged in very detailed technical discussions about how you build solutions and how you're going to make wireless power work inside a wide range of consumer devices. Uh, as we grow, we're going to have to expand our development. We are headed offshore with our development this year. We're looking at locations in Taiwan uh, and in Austin, Texas, as we need to attract more and more, more talent to our organisation. Um, this is a really, really important part of how we grow our organisation and how we continue to build. Um, attracting the best talent, getting some of the best people on board is, has been really, really key. We have. Um, just um, recently, last month, uh, very happy to announce we attracted you know, a guy I regard as one of the real hard, hardware technology um, engineers in Silicon Valley to our board, a guy, a person by the name of Ghani Yusuf, who has led the, the engineering development team at uh, Marvell Technology right since the beginning of that company. So um, something that we're, we're, we're very proud of. So the point I am making and the point that I want to leave you all with here is you can build, and you know, we absolutely believe this, a global technology business from New Zealand. Um, that's what we've started on. That's what we're seven years into today. Uh, next week, I'm, I head off to Taiwan, and this gives you some idea as to some of the products that we're, we're delivering. This is one of the biggest um, consumer electronics shows in, in uh, Asia next week. Um, so there's a, a bunch of different devices that you know, we are demonstrating. You know, we have a complete family to charge wirelessly. In the, in the top corner, a bowl charging a Samsung Galaxy watch. Yes, it's still a very, very ugly watch, but you can now charge it, recharge it wirelessly. <laughs> Um, on the, on the right-hand side, recharging tablets and uh, sorry, your smartphones and your tablets on, on on a charging system on a charging pad that sits on top of a desk. Um, your tablets as well, and in the bottom right-hand corner, you know, a, a hint at what we have in the future, and you're actually seeing the transmitter or the charging pad disappear from view and being integrated completely and totally into the furniture. So recharging your 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 phone is a matter of placing it on on the top of a table. Um, s some signs of things to come. I want to leave you now with three things that I think about um, on an ongoing basis. Um, how New Zealand are we, you know, power by proxy as a company? Um, will we be a New Zealand company in 10 years time? How will we identify ourselves as a New Zealand company? We don't sell stuff here, I don't employ sales guys here. Uh, we have engineers here, but we will have engineers in Texas, we'll have engineers in Taiwan. Um, what will keep the New Zealandness of this company uh, alive? We're in the middle of raising a, a significant amount of capital. That capital might come from New Zealand, it might, as it was in my last round, come from international or overseas investors. Um, that will undoubtedly have an impact as to how we see ourselves as a company. Will our world-class wireless power research program at the University of Auckland exist in 10 years' time? It's existed for 25 years. It's regarded as one of the leading programs in the world. It attracts people from all over the world to learn and study here. Uh, will we continue to attract those world-class researchers? Or you know, will that program die with the founder? Um, incredibly sad if that was to happen. These research franchises, which I call them, um, are incredibly valuable to New, to, to New Zealand. We have had them because incredibly smart people like John Boyce have doggedly focused on being passionate about one part of research. And John's not the only one. We probably, I don't know, we have 10, maybe 15 world-class researchers in these, this country. These people are so important. Uh, because if we don't keep their franchises alive, we don't keep them going, will we ever recreate them with the way in which young talent, um, young people can move seamlessly around the world these days? You know, are we at the point where these research franchises will be lost uh, to New Zealand? Can we compete with the international dollars? So these are things you know, that are important to me as a New Zealander. They're important to me as somebody who is you know, working hard 
um, and, and has built a very strong team of people who you know, have that objective of building a global technology company in New Zealand. And, and you know, I don't know what the next 10 years are going to look like um, in terms of technology. Maybe it will look like this. You know, and, and there's you know, my friend Mr. Bowie. I mean, I think that outfit is a giant wireless power transmitter coil. <laughs> and you can walk into the room, and if everybody walked into the room, we could each charge the devices that everybody else is um, wearing. So that just goes to show that you, know, you can get vision and inspiration from just about anything that you want. Thank you very much.